Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in the United Kingdom and today we're going to discuss case number 9 from our Facebook page. So this was a case of a 96 year old lady uh, that I've seen a few years ago who presented to ED with a syncope. So she was completely back to normal when I saw her and um, her observations were all normal except the heart rate that was 44 and she's had an ECG that was this one so as I always say this is the time to pause the video take your time to analyze the ECG because it will need a careful look and then come back restart the video and we'll take it from there so let's move on and let's try to answer the question of what is going on here. Let's analyze this ECG and, um, and figure out what's happening here. So this is something that I'll keep talking about over and over. You must have an approach when you analyze any ECG. And in our particular one today, um, this will be um, really needed. So the suggested approach that we've talked about before was this. So you start with looking at the QRS complex and ask yourself four questions. What's the rate doing? What's the rhythm doing? What's the width like? And what's the axis doing? Then you check the P waves and its relation to the complex. Then you check the two important intervals that we're always interested in, the PR interval and the QT interval. Then you have a look at the chamber enlargement. So both atria and both ventricles. And then you check for ischemia, so that includes the ST segment, T wave and Q waves. And then you check for anything else. So if we apply this to our ECG, let's start with the first four questions. We'll notice here that the rate is slow. Let's look at the numbers on the ECG paper. So we've got a heart rate of 44. So uh, to start with, we have got a uh, bradycardia. So we've got a slow rate. Uh, so that is our rate here and um, moving on to the rhythm it looks regular to me looking at the width the complex look broad here and um, if you look at the measurements it is 130 so it is broad it is uh, more than 120 milliseconds and uh, then looking at the axis looking at lead one and AVF so AVF uh, one one has got a quite a deep S wave here so it is not really a true uh, positive complex and AVF is completely positive so there is a rightish axis deviation here and actually the QRS axis is 92 so we've got a rightish axis uh, here at uh, deviation so in summary so far we've got a right bundle branch block and we've got right axis deviation moving on with more questions let's talk about the intervals enlargements and ischemia so from the intervals point of view let's uh, get our numbers back so um, we will notice that the PR interval is um, where are we so the PR interval is 204 uh, milliseconds so we've got a prolonged PR interval in here it's more than 200 and um, looking at the QT interval so the corrected QTC is uh, 486 so again slightly on the prolonged side so um, we have got a prolonged PR interval and a prolonged QTC from the enlargement point of view um, there is not really much to say about this in this ECG and from the ischemia point of view I don't really think that we've got any ST elevation or depression or um, T wave uh, changes in here so in summary so far We've got a slightly prolonged PR interval and QTC in addition to what we had before. Now we're going to move on to the question that we have missed in our approach so far, which is what's the P waves doing with the QRS complexes? So we said before that you should look for P waves everywhere in the ECG. So looking at uh, this part of the ECG to be fair i think that i can see only one p wave before each complex uh, so that is looking at this one um checking this part of the ECG. that is the rhythm strip of the same ecg and again i don't really see more than 
one P wave before each complex with a prolonged fixed PR interval that is 2 or 4 milliseconds. So you can easily say, looking at this ECG, that we've got a first degree heart block here. But we said that before, the best lead to check for P waves is usually V1. And if we get V1 in this ECG, we'll notice that, yes, we have got this P wave before each complex, but there is also this here. And if you map them up, they will map nicely with something here as well, which is mapping nicely with this P wave and backwards with this P wave. So if you look at it this way, you will notice that actually we've got two P waves before each complex. So this is not a first degree heart block. This is actually a second degree heart block. So the reason for us to talk about V1 this way is if you look at this, is this is the conductive system of the heart. So that's your SA node, that's your AV node, and then the rest of the conductive system. And if you imagine where we put our leads, you will actually see that V1 is almost just above the SA node. So, um, so in my head, it makes sense that V1 is probably going to be the best lead um, to visualize P waves. So in summary, so far, the findings in our ECG were right bundle branch block, right axis deviation, and a second degree heart block. If you combine the three together, that will give you the diagnosis of our case, which is trifascicular block. So let's talk about this and let's talk about the conductive system of the heart. So this is our SA node and this is the pacemaker. It will fire through the atria and the impulse will reach the AV node. Then we will get the bundle of his, right bundle branch, left bundle branch. Then it will split into left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle. So this is our normal conductive system of the heart. When we have conduction problems, the ECG will start looking different. And it depends upon where the conduction problem is, you get a different picture. So if the conduction problem is at the AV nodal level, so if we've got a blockage here, that is a heart, that's, that will give you the heart blocks. If the conduction problem is at the bundles level, that will give you a bundle branch block, whether it is right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block or if it is as at lower level so if it is at fascicular level then you will get a fascicular block whether it is a left anterior fascicular block or left posterior fascicular block so what is trifascicular block it is basically referred to a problem with the conduction through all the three fascicles the right bundle which we consider as a fascicle and um left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle. When the three are affected together, we call this trifascicular block. So this is what happens. So basically, this is our heart, uh, SA node, AV node, bundle of his, left bundle, right bundle, left anterior fascicle, left posterior fascicle. So to start with, you get a right bundle branch block. Then you will be left with these two fascicles. Well, if one of them go, you get an axis deviation. Whether it is right axis or left axis, depending upon which fascicle is gone. So let's say that we've got right axis deviation here. And then you're left with only one functioning fascicle now. If you get any disease from this point all the way down to this point that will cause you to have um, that will cause the, you to lose the last fascicle and that will cause you to have the trifascicular block and put you at risk of having a complete heart block so this is what happens with trifascicular block so basically in summary you get right bundle branch block you get an axis deviation whether that is a left axis deviation or right axis deviation, then you get some sort of a heart block to make it a trifascicular block, whether it's a first degree, third degree, second degree, or a third degree. 
So, trifascicle block can be complete or incomplete. Whether the three fascicles are gone completely or not, this is what's going to define it. So, incomplete trifascicle block is, has basically got three different patterns in the ECG. It can be in the form of a bifascicular block, which means right bundle branch block with axis deviation, in addition to first degree heart block. And that is the commonest form of trifascicular block that we see. Or it can be in the form of a bifascicular block. So again, right bundle with axis deviation plus a second degree heart block. Or it can be in the form of a right bundle with alternating left axis deviation and right axis deviation. Basically, the two uh, fascicles are diseased, the anterior and posterior, left anterior and left posterior. And each time one of them fails. So that will make your axis change between right axis and left axis. So these are the three ECG pattern that you will see um, in incomplete trifascicular block. How about the complete one? Well, the complete one is basically a bifascicular block, so right bundle with axis deviation, in addition to a complete third degree heart block. So the most common pattern uh, referred to as trifascicular block is, well, as we said before, bifascicular block plus a first degree heart block. So. Is it important to know about this? Yes, there are um, many clinical implications and it's an important condition to notice. So to start with, incomplete trifascicular block may progress to complete, although the overall risk is not that high. And patient who present with syncope, and that is the most important bit here, plus an ECG that is showing incomplete trifascicular block, they usually need to be admitted for cardiology workup because there is a good chance that the syncope reason is actually com intermittent complete heart block. So some of these patients would require an insertion of a permanent pacemaker. And if the, if the patient has got uh, just an accidental finding in the ECG of a trifascicular block, an incomplete trifascicular block, and they are completely asymptomatic, then that is on its own is not an indication for pacing. So they need to be symptomatic to get the pacemaker. So let's see some examples for this. So this was one of my patients that I've seen a few years ago as well. So um, looking at this ECG, you can clearly notice that we've got a broad complex here with a right bundle branch block pattern. We've got an axis that is, this is pointing up, this is pointing down. So my left hand is up, so that is left axis deviation plus there is a prolonged fixed PR interval, and we can only see one P wave before each complex. So that's a first degree heart block. So this is, in summary, an incomplete trifascicular block. Here is another example. And again, we have got a RSR dash pattern with a broad complex. We've got right bundle branch block. We've got an axis that this is pointing up and this is pointing down. So that is left axis deviation. And again, looking at V1, P, P, then a complex, P, P, then a complex, same thing, and they're mapping nicely. So that is actually a second degree heart block. So in summary, there is another incomplete trifascicular block in here. And lastly, looking at this ECG, so we have got in here another right bundle branch block, and we have got an axis that in one pointing up in AVF pointing down, so that is a left axis deviation. And if you check the P waves, actually, they are not really talking to the complexes at all. So we've got a complete heart block in here. So if you combine the three together, that will make you um, getting a complete trifascicular block. So let's go back to our case and find out what happened. This was a 96 year old lady who presented to ED with syncope with a completely back to normal at presentation. Everything was fine other than the heart rate and her ECG was this one. And looking at this ECG, we now know that we have got a right bundle branch block and we've got a right axis deviation and we've got a second degree heart block. So in summary, we've got an incomplete trifascicular block plus syncope as a presentation. So this lady, um, I've seen her in a hospital with no in-house cardiology facility. So I've referred her to another hospital uh, with cardiology facility to have a pacemaker insertion and she's had it done successfully. So in summary, 
Um, always have a systematic approach with any ECG interpretation. That will make you not miss anything important in an ECG. And always make sure that you check for P waves everywhere in the ECG, but probably V1 is where you will find them. Trifascicle block can be complete and incomplete. And the commonest form of it is when you get right bundle branch block with axis deviation, whether right or left, with a first degree heart block. And syncope in addition to trifascicle block is bad. So that's a cardiology deferral for a possible pacemaker in SASH. And uh, this is it about the case uh, that we uh, we're planning to discuss. So I hope you find this useful. Uh, that's back now to our game. And uh, the question is going to be, where do you think this picture is taken from? Um, I'm going to put some links in the show notes regarding the references for what we've talked about for further reading. And I'll try my best to talk to you very soon. And bye for now. Thank you.